a reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I will give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Preparing for this preaching, um, I found it a bit comical. Dave Delich made it a point to tell me that, have you ever tried to split a heifer? It takes like three weeks. (laughs) I, I think there is something a bit comical about our pericope today, about this reading. In one sense, I think it's the divine pinky swear. Here we have Abram saying, God, how do I know that I'll get what you tell me you're going to give me? And God basically says, all right, I'll stoop down to your level and I'll do those things that you do to make a pact, pinky swear, or become blood brothers or whatever. And he says, I will give you this stuff. It is a divine pinky swear. In essence, God is saying, I have given you my word. Trust it. I think this sentiment is also mirrored in the gospel for this weekend, which is the gospel reading of the transfiguration. And in a very magnificent and manifest way, God says, I have given you my word. Listen to him. Trust it. I've been doing a lot of reflecting recently on prayer and how our personal relationship God works. And this question tends to come to mind a lot, and it is, to what extent do we trust God? To what extent do we say this command of God to trust Him, to trust His Word, to what extent do we really allow it to penetrate our prayer life? Human beings don't give their trust easily. And the reason why we don't give our trust easily is because it requires of us to be exposed, to be vulnerable. To trust in someone else means to put, in one sense, our life in their hands, our safety, our security. We scrutinize people and things We make them prove their trustworthiness. And sometimes a person's pinky swear or a person's word isn't enough. We want data. We want proven historical facts. We want things that have lasted and succeeded and have survived the test of time. We also like things that fit our predisposed feelings and judgments because they're safe they're secure, they're those things that we are willing to put our trust in. 
our reticence to trust is a survival instinct. It's about self-protection. And we must be darn sure that whatever we put our trust in is worth it. Christianity calls us to a very radical life of trust. We often talk about the vows as being countercultural, the vow of chastity, the vow of poverty, the vow of obedience. But to be Christian, to be Christian is countercultural in that it calls us to radical trust, as Abram did, as the disciples did. Last week, we had the, the preaching, the, the, the gospel reading of the temptations of Christ, in which the devil pushed Jesus to say, in what do you trust? Especially that last temptation. Jump off the parapet. See if God will catch you. Do you trust that you are the Son of God? And this week we have God responding to the devil. We have God responding to that nagging doubt in our head where God says, my word is trustworthy. We have that in our reading from Genesis today. We have it in the gospel reading about the transfiguration. God calls us by our very baptism, by our Christian faith, to an intimate and trusting relationship. God is asking us to be vulnerable, to allow ourselves a level of exposure, to allow ourselves a level of intimacy that sometimes can make us very uncomfortable. Lent is a way in which we can reestablish that trust, or at least it allows us to practice trusting. That's what the works of penance are all about. Fasting makes us give up our senses, those things that we can trust with our sensible being. When we're hungry or we want something to eat, we eat it. And God says there's something more. Trust me. Let it go. Almsgiving, money, that's, that's a real basic sense of security about our place in the world, our ability to survive long-term, not just short-term, as our senses, as food might be, but long-term. And he says, give it to the poor. Let it go. Trust me. And our prayer our tendencies for self-reliance, our tendencies to control the world around us. He says, let it go. Trust in me. Bring to me your prayer, your needs. Trust in me. Timothy Radcliffe, our dear master, former master, had a great talk with us a few days ago. One of the things he challenged was the sense of creativity and imagination that we allow in our spiritual life, that we allow in our preaching, that we allow in our faith. I think there is a challenge here for our Lenten penances, for our Lenten prayer, for our Lenten reflection in Timothy's words. Because to be creative is to be an unbounded self. To go beyond the borders of what we thought possible. To go beyond the borders of what makes us comfortable. To change the palette of our prayer from a simple black and white to expose our true colors. Let us, moving forward this weekend and through the rest of Lent, take up this challenge of God's call to trust in Him to trust, to be creative, to expose our deepest self to God. Spend time exploring God's wonder, the ineffableness. Become a mystic. I know it's cliche, but I think it's appropriate. Let go and let God and see how he responds.